Hi third graders, we have been talking about environmental traits this unit. We've just learned that the environment can affect physical traits. So let's look at some case studies. Case studies are when we look at examples in science that kind of prove the phenomenon or the scientific reasoning that we've learned. So let's prove or see some cases for how the environment can affect physical traits. Aw, look at these two little German Shepherd puppies. They were born in the same litter. That means that they have the same parents, right? They're, they're, they're siblings. The one on the left is Ace, and the one on the right is Cookie. Wave hi to Ace and Cookie. So cute. So Ace and Cookie were born in the same litter. They were born in the same place, but they were then separated when their owners bought them. Ace was bought by an owner from Alaska, and so Ace moved to Alaska. See where that dotted line file, or leads to? Cookie, on the other hand, moved to California, Southern California, so the bottom part of California. So they're in two different places now, okay? Now they're from the same breed or the same litter. They have the same parents, so they have a lot of the same traits, right? They have a lot of those same inherited traits. They're not exactly the same, but they're similar. We wanna know which dog will develop a much thicker coat of fur due to its environment. Which dog will shed most of its fur due to its environment? Think about that question or those questions. Let's first think about the top one. Which dog will develop a thicker coat of fur due to the environment? Do you think that Ace in Alaska will have a thicker coat of fur? Or do you think Cookie in California will have a thicker coat of fur? Pause the video and think about your answer. All right, now let's think about the second question. Which dog will shed most of its fur due to the environment? Do you think that Ace in Alaska will shed most of its fur? Or do you think that Cookie in California will shed most of its fur? All right, let's see if your answers were correct. Which dog will develop a much thicker coat? Ace will. Alaska is very cold. Ace will develop his thick coat of fur in response to that cold weather in his environment. Ace will need that thick coat of fur to survive the low temperatures. So the trait that we're talking about here is fur. That's what was being affected by the environment, okay? Which dog will shed most of its fur due to its environment? Cookie will. Southern California is very warm. Cookie will shed most or much of its fur to adjust to the warmer climate. Otherwise, she would be too warm. So Cookie, being in a warm place, is gonna to have to shed most of its fur. The trait, again, is fur, and that fur was affected by the environment. Good. All right, so let's talk about plants now. Look at this plant. I know this is just a um, cartoon version of a plant, but this plant represents one that has received adequate water. That means just enough water for it to survive, just the perfect amount. We know that by having adequate water, it will grow tall. And that is clearly having to do with the trait of height, right? So some of its traits, some of the physical traits like height have to do with the environment. When it gets adequate water, it can grow tall. Think, let's look at the second, or the second row. If it gets the right amount of sunlight and space, then the stem will be really strong and straight. That affects the, the trait of the stem. So I know that if our plant is getting the right sun and it's not like crushed with other plants, it has plenty of room for it to grow, then that stem that's winding up is strong and it will grow straight. It doesn't need to be crooked. Now let's look at a not so lucky plant. This plant has a much different environment. This plant has lack of water, so it doesn't have very much. Um, when it has lack of water, it doesn't grow very tall. It's very short. So having lack of water does affect its physical trait. It affects its height. It also did not have enough sunlight and enough space. There were too many things crowding it in. And because of that, it's going to be twisted. It could be crooked. Um, it could lean towards an open space to try to get enough sunlight. And that is clearly affecting the stem, okay? If a, if a plant has to twist and, and bend just to find sunlight, then it's affecting its, its physical traits. Last one, 
Oh, we're gonna watch a quick little video first. This is so cool. This is about plants following the light. Watch those plants when they try to follow the light. First it's the indoor light, now look at that. is so cool so this is a time lapse which means that they sped up time they but you could see that those plants were following the light when there was no light outdoors through the window it would they would all kind of turn to the indoor lights the artificial lights but then when it was sunny outside all those plants would start to move in the direction of the natural sunlight so the plants were using that sunlight to gain nutrients and they were changing their physical traits, their, the way that they were turned and moving, right? Based on the environment, based on what direction they needed to face to receive those um, foods and nutrients. Last one, this one you're gonna help me with. Oh my goodness, look at these two cuties. They are also from the same litter of puppies, okay? Now, they have the same parents, right? Um, but again, these two puppies were adopted by two different owners. On the left, you have SpongeBob, and on the right, you have Plankton. So darn cute. SpongeBob here was adopted into a home where he is walked twice a day. They spend a lot of time with him playing outside and inside, and he eats only the prescribed amount of food that is for his diet, right? That the vet says that he should eat. Now, Plankton on the other hand, spends his time inside. He doesn't go outside very often. He's sedentary, that means he doesn't move very much. He kind of just sits there. And he eats table scraps throughout the day. So people drop their food from the lunch table or the dinner table and he eats them all up along with his food. So he eats people food and his puppy food. So your question is this, which dog is lean, healthy, and energetic due to its environment? Okay, you're gonna think, is the answer going to be Plankton, who spends time inside, eats table scraps? Or is it going to be SpongeBob, who's walked twice a day, plays a lot, and eats only the prescribed amount of dog food? So get a line sheet of paper. I want you to fill in the blanks of this highlighted part. I believe blank, either SpongeBob or Plankton, is the healthy dog because at his home he, and then explain what he does that makes him the healthy dog. Pause the video until you have that sentence written down. You now have the first sentence written down and here is question number two. Which dog is overweight and experiences health problems due to its environment? So you're gonna fill in the blanks. I believe blank is the unhealthy dog because at his home he blah, 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 blah. You're going to choose either Plankton or SpongeBob. Once you have this sentence written down, your paper should then have two sentences on it. One explaining which one is the healthy dog, one explaining which one is the unhealthy dog. Once you have those both written down, then you are going to end the video and you are going to write your or type your two sentences, both sentences, into the discussion board below. Good luck. Make sure you use the sentence frames for your sentences.